Hello and welcome to Empire of War Games. My name is Eplash, and today we are going to talk about the other important changes from the most recent FAQs. I will mainly focus on the Space Marines and Xenos changes, with some demons sprinkled in for good measure. So I'm going to skip a good chunk of the FAQ. If you are interested in my opinion nonetheless, drop it in the comments below. I will answer it. I love giving lengthy and overly specific replies. Oh, and if you want to check out my opinion about the Necron FAQ changes in specific, check out the video linked in the description below. In the next part, I will talk a little bit about the methodology of me approaching and analyzing this FAQ. If you are not interested in that and think that's boring, the timestamps should be active and you can skip to whichever part you prefer. Now, my videos take quite a while to get pushed out because I take research rather seriously. And even though I spend a lot of time uh, theorizing, learning and playing Warhammer in 2019 and 2020, I don't know everything. Thus, I prefer to wait a little, read and watch others' opinions, then analyze what I deem important or weird enough to include, and what to remove and basically stuff I disagree with. I hope this explains a little why my videos take so long to be produced, and I appreciate everyone watching them, even if the topic is a few days old. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Without further ado, let's get into the FAQ. Let's start with one of the bigger overall changes, which directly apply to Eldar and Imperial Guard, for example, which is bring it down. It is now way less punishing on less durable weapon platforms, like for example Sentinels or Warwalkers. And yeah, I honestly and truly believe that this will make some of the Walkers more likely to be taken, even if they are not the optimal choice as of now. Maybe that changes just because of this change alone. And yeah. It, it's not an auto max out uh, for your secondary objectives for your enemy. So it's not as obnoxious. And yeah, I think uh, grabbing three sentinels or three war walkers will be a more reasonable choice. Definitely a good change in my mind. Furthermore, we have a change to a port of witch, which is now less punishing for factions like Eldar, Thousand Sons or Grey Knights. Since victory points were reduced by one third or more, you can see it on the screen right now. So it's less punishing uh, for certain factions which heavy, heavily rely on Psykers or which only exist out of Psykers, like Grey Knights. Um, yeah, similar to the earlier change, I'm a big fan of this one. It's not an auto-include anymore if you play against those factions and your opponent will be happy that he's not just handing you secondary 15 secondary points for free, which is a good change. It's actually more fun for everyone involved. Then Games Workshop implemented a rule that basically says whenever you roll off to see who starts first, um, the person who rolls higher auto starts. So you don't have a choice anymore. And according to them, uh, it's basically a measure to prevent time wasting. But it's also something that reduces choice and options and strategizing. So it's a little bit ambivalent if it's really good or not. I think this will save about two to three minutes in my experience since people, especially in competitive, want to think about this more thoroughly. But yeah, my advice, when dropping your units pre-game, position them in a way you'll be more or less happy no matter which way the dice come up. So yeah, whether you start or not, you should position them in a way that both options are more or less covered. This will certainly take a little bit of time to adapt, especially for competitive players, but ultimately leads to a more interesting turn one in my book, which is a plus. It's a neutral change. It has um, its ups and downs, but yeah, all in all interesting. And we will keep an eye on that to see how much it actually impacts competitive Warhammer 40k. Another change, and actually probably my favorite change, is that, um, yeah, whenever a player goes second, um, they don't calculate their victory points at the start of the command phase on turn five, but rather at the end, which is great. I've read many uh, Reddit articles and um, yeah, Reddit posts, more or less, that we're talking about like interesting turn fives and nail biters and some people lost and they were actually happy about it because the ending was very very dramatic 
And I think that's exactly what we are going to get out of this change. This doesn't even the ground between the person who goes first and second 100%. Uh, at least I don't think it will, but it helps. It also, yeah, increases the likelihood of an interesting dynamic of including those nail biter endings. And yeah, if you want to adapt as going second, you will probably need to think ahead in turn four and probably, I don't know, keep some uh, command points in your back pocket to allow your units to move further. And it is probably also worth it to keep your fast moving units, if they are still alive on turn four, in cover so you can charge forward with them and possibly, uh, yeah, sneak some objectives and grab them without your opponent expecting it. Good change overall, definitely. I like it. All right, now we will go into the factions and talk a little bit about the different uh, points changes and uh, smaller rule changes. But here's a little disclaimer. I will not talk about Rukari, even though I said this is a Xenos FAQ, because I feel like it's not really worth it to analyze the Rukari before the codex drops because I don't have the full picture and it's similar with the death guard. Um, I don't like analyzing things I don't have the full picture of. I could go on and uh, analyze the points changes and try to predict the changes for the new codex, but in the end it would be a waste of time and pointless. Yeah, without the whole picture, the updated stratagems, all army-wide rules, relics, psychic powers, you get the idea. So you hear about me and about the death guard and Drukhari in a separate video once the Codex is released. Most exciting of all, I actually play both armies myself, so I'm excited to dive in and analyze these changes. And you can expect videos about the combat patrol boxes for both armies. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's continue with Craftworld's Eldar. All the troops got a little nice points decrease. Uh, they have barely seen any competitive play beforehand, except the ones you were forced to take to fill out detachments. But... Flyers were all the rage in 8th edition for Eldar, so yeah, you had like 5 or 6 of those. It's still not the ideal step in the right direction for Eldar in my mind, because yeah, it's more a change geared towards casual play than competitive play, but it will give competitive lists a little bit more leeway when it comes to points, because you will save 2 points per model. Um, yeah. And it's two points across the board for all troops, which means that the balance between the units itself, between the units in the troop section, does not change. I wish there was an easier way to grab Storm Guardians when it comes to real world money. They are rather expensive, 40 of them with all the upgrade kits and buying all the Guardian uh, boxes can get a little bit expensive. But if you want them, seven points for a Storm Guardian sounds excellent in my mind. They are cheap OPSEC and there is always a need for that especially in the current edition where uh, objectives are the key element to winning a game. And as I said, the little used Warwalker might make a return because bringing it down is less punishing now. All in all, I'm very happy about these changes. Anything that helps the craft worlds move away from being super uh, flyer centric is a win in my book. Good changes. Regarding the Harlequins and also a little bit the Adeptus Custodius, these guys came out as the winners of this FAQ. No changes except a cheaper Void Weaver and some changes to the Adeptus Custodius, which were not really that impressive. And when compared with the Space Marine changes, they will probably expand their dominance at the top of the list when it comes to competitive armies. Not much more to add here. Next, we are talking about the Space Bugs. Yes, a faction that is so cool, but gets little to no love at all for the past four years or even longer. I don't know anymore. But yeah, when it comes to rules, there are points drops across the board for some of the important key units, as you can see on the screen. In my opinion, the warrior points drop will be the most impactful on how Tyranid players build their lists, since they were on the brink of excellence, but being a touch too expensive and now at 70 points i think they have finally arrived other very notable points reductions are termoguns and the tyranno effects a whole unit of termoguns costs 210 points now which is great 
while the Tyrannofax base is now 170 points from 190. All in all, this is 100% a step in the right direction for Tyranids, and I'm happy GW improved so many of their units. Lastly, they benefit from the changes to bring it down and apart a witch as well. Positive changes all around, good stuff. Okay, I will reserve my opinions about the Gene Stiller cult for future videos since I have barely any idea about them. Not a single person in my circle of friends plays them and I don't play them either and no one on Tabletop Simulator plays them, I know. So yeah, I will display the changes on the screen regardless so you can take a look for yourself. If you're a Gene Stealer Cult player, please join my Discord and have a chat with me about them or drop some insight and give opinions in the comments below because I would really like to learn about them, but it's rather difficult when you have no one knowledgeable about them to play against. I will educate uh, myself on them in the future so I can give you insightful insights, useful insights, whatever. Thanks for understanding. Next up, we are talking about the Tau Empire an army I started playing recently. Everyone knows their current state in the game and everyone is equally confused by the changes. When compared to Elder or Tyranids, for example. The bad? Tactical drones cost 20 points per model now, which is insane. Don't take them. There's literally no scenario in which you would grab them now. They were arguably too expensive before and now they are borderline unusable. Note that these drones that these are the drones selected separately in the fast attack slot, not the drones attached to units and models. That's important. Then, Crisis, Cold Star, and Enforcer Commanders went up in points. Again, very confusing change, and it's a change that wasn't needed at all. I have done some maths and pushing around numbers to understand what GW was thinking here, but there is literally no explanation I could come up with. But, Crisis teams came down 5 points per model, which is a nice boost, and bodyguards went down by 3 points per model. My opinion? People will be pushed towards the regular Crisis suits even more because of the bigger points disparity between Crisis and bodyguard suits. Shadow Sun is a Supreme Commander now, which is a good thing, but nothing groundbreaking. You can include her in your list without spending CP now. Yay. The last notable change are broadsides. Their points reduction is very welcome, especially considering the cuts are 20 or 15 points respectively. All in all, there are some upsides and some very confusing downsides for the Tau in this FAQ. I hope the drone change was a mistake, but I highly doubt it. If it stays like this, never take the separate drones in the fast attack slot and yeah, just grab as many of them as you can with the units. I'm disappointed in this weird and rather haphazard changes and I almost feel like GW has no idea what to do with Tau themselves. I hope they can get some designer to do the new Tau Codex that actually plays a lot of Tau and understands what they really need to get back on the tabletop because as it stands right now I tend to agree with a lot of other players that they need a severe design change when it comes to rules. Okay, and as the last point of the video, I would like to talk a little bit about Space Marines and the changes. Inceptors went up by 5 points per model, which is 100% due to Plasma Inceptors, but I'm not sure if that unit really needed a points hike. And the same thing applies to Outriders, that's also 5 points. Those are both good units, no questions asked, but they are not OP or anything special. The Eradicators, on the other hand, would have probably deserved a, pri uh, a points hike of 10 points. Honestly. I would have rather had Inceptors and Outriders not go up at all and the Eradicators go up by 10 points per model. That seems a little bit excessive, but those guys are really impressive at what they do. They are really, really good at what they do. Then there are some changes to, uh, yeah, Nurglings. For the Chaos Demons factions, Nurglings are the, prime, the premier screeners of the Demons army and they went up by quite a bit, I think 4 points. And that's really sad for all the players that actually want to play uh, Nurgle only because Plague Bearers are way too overcosted and I would have loved to see Nurglings go up a little bit because they actually deserved it, they are really good. 
but I would have loved to see Plague Bearers go down to six ish points. Six points sounds good. Yeah, other than that, the other changes I won't discuss. If you have any specific questions about them, uh, drop it in the comments below. I would be happy to chat with you about them. Other than that, if you want to talk to me directly or yeah, have discussions about changes, join my Discord server. Uh, it's Everything is linked in the description below. And yeah, other than that, consider subscribing, liking or disliking if you like the video or not. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching and I see you in the next video. Bye bye.